The poster boys in the building, Jimmy Manawa and Volkan Uzdemir, number three versus number five in this UFC light heavyweight division. Tonight's fight clock is brought to you by HSS, the world leader in orthopedics. Manawa in red, Volkan Uzdemir is in black. Watch Manawa's left hook. That's one of his biggest weapons. And he sets up, he sets up his right knee real well with it. He goes jab, jab, jab hook, and then leads with the hook and then fires a knee up the middle. This man is powerful. But right now we're in a clinch, right where Volkan wants to be. Bruce Demir's coaches say, don't let the subdued demeanor fool you. He is confident. He's got heart for days. Nice short shot there from Bruce Demir. Huge punches. Demir heard him. Awesome. Switzerland stand up as they attend to Jimmy Manoa. Wow. Vulcan Uzdemir. The time, remember I was going to go film you at Titan for your championship yeah. fight and you called me. Yeah. yeah. Like at that moment, like what was your mindset? Like you knew like I'm finna just come into this league and I'm going to do exactly what I'm doing because you the, took it on. The thing with home. Titan is that I didn't want to sign there first because that's a smaller league and that's an exclusive contract. So I wasn't able to fight anywhere else and the money was low. But still, I need the exposure because you got to make your name out there in America. I was unknown. And um, so I was like, OK, let's fight there. But then I got stuck for a year because I didn't have no opponent. Uh, three fight got canceled, opponent pulled out, opponent got injured. And then I got like a little bit, I got like, I, start, I started getting lazy. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I was training for a full year, camp after camp. Because every time they say, oh no, you're going to fight in eight weeks. So I got to get ready, you know. So I was keep, I was training all the time. And then I was, my rhythm was a little bit low. I knew I, was, I wasn't even going to fight. And then UFC called me and they told me to fight OSP. He was number six in the world. He fought John Jones for the belt. And then I was like, I didn't think twice. That was a, a yes right away. And uh, that was the opportunity. That was like, I mean, uh, uh, it happened once. It happened twice. But as soon as it happened, you got you to gotta catch the opportunity. And uh, I say yes right away on the phone, 205. Uh, I, I hang up the phone. And then I was like, oh, what's my weight right now? Because I was a heavyweight for a while. And then I, I went on the scale and I was like, oh shit, now I gotta lose weight. I got two weeks to lose weight and that's it. So I focused on losing weight. I was really uh, tiring. Uh, I wasn't really training a lot before, but I had to lose weight. <laughs> so it affected my cardio a lot. And, but I went into the fight uh, on killing mode. And I wasn't able to do uh, the performance that I wanted to. But after that fight, I was back, you know, the, at, at my old self. I'm going to help Jessica, right? Huh? She's bringing her other friend. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. You're still stopping halfway. Go through me, go through me. There it is, right there. You sure? Man. Yes, yeah, very sure, very sure. There you go. That's it. A little pop, pop, pop. That's it. Oh, there it is, right there. Go. Good. Continue. 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 There you go. Beautiful. Good job. Let's do it. Go. Should I jump? No. Yes, perfect. Oh, Yo, Rick. I kicked yeah, him once. You kicked him, I got once. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't eat. Oh. <laughs> I've been training since I was nine years old, on and off. On and off, I, I got serious at the age of 15. I was hired by my first school at 19. And ever since then, I've been training. I'm turning 50 next year. So you do the math. <laughs> to the match. What happens when you're, you're in a match and you, bah, you break your hand? Yeah. Okay. And you're in round one. Yeah. Then what? 
You got it, see? Then the elbow. You got to do all the things and try to finish the fight without anything else. There you go. Go. Go, go, go. Go. Go, go, go. Go. Nice. That's what was good. Taekwondo controls distance and angles, uh, degrees. Uh, everything in Taekwondo is all for never to get hit. Hit without hitting. Okay, taking the other person apart uh, without invading your personal space. That's it. The legs are longer than your arms. That's the extension that we, we try to use. No, but I wanted to use this one for a while, yeah. but nobody teaches me yeah. this one. So I was trying, trying to do it on my own, but it's never as good as. We're gonna, we're gonna make it better. Yeah. It's just, it's all angles. Everything is angles. Okay, you don't have to turn all the way like this. It's just the weight distribution. The, the traditional way is this. Mm. Yeah. So see, I'm engaging here, mm. letting it go. That, so, bah! The knee has to be this linear movement. Bah! Like that, straight up. Da! All right. Bah! One line, one line. I, I, I made it to the UFC, but that's just the beginning. So now I have to fucking show the world. And um, that's how uh, I train really hard now. I had a full camp, I had 12 weeks, and I was finding the, the next guy, the, the next, uh, the potential, potential champ, Misha Sirkonov. He was coming off four fight uh, win. Uh, he's really complete. He was like, he was the next, next, next big thing. And then uh, that was a trap for me, but I don't back up for nothing. I, I, I feed off challenge and that's, that's how uh, I, fi I fight him. You know, I had 12 weeks so with a full camp, I'm unstoppable. When I know what I have to do, when I know I have to fight one guy, one guy, 15 minutes, that's it. No more. So you, you gotta be smart. You gotta know this guy has this weakness. He has this strength. You gotta get ready for one single guy, so it's easy. Do your own homework. You do your homework, you, you're good, you fight. You win, easy. And then uh, I fought the guy, 28 seconds, KO. And then I was like, okay, now I got, uh, you know, I was celebrating and I was uh, getting ready for, I tried to be ahead of, of everything all the time. So I was already planning my next fight for, with Jimmy Manuel. You're sitting at number five right now in the rankings. There's just a couple of people ahead of you. Some of those people have fights now, but is there someone that stands out that you would like to face next? For me, I need to, I need to see the winner of that fight, but there is so much high name, big name and, and stuff like that. But I wanna, I wanna also test my striking skills and maybe that could be Jimmy Manoa. I remember Jimmy was in uh, Sweden also. He was uh, with, Gus, with Gus, because Gus was fighting on the same card, and uh, he was also a guest fighter. But he's the only one for them team that look at me, you know, like a little bit, you know, bad. So he had like this eye contact on me all the time, and I, I look at him and I was like, what the fuck happened? You know, like, why do you care? I'm like a newcomer right here, and you're, you're, the, you're the man. So why do you look at me? And then I was okay. Make me mad a little bit, you know? So I was like, uh, wait. Misha first, then it's gonna be your turn in my head, you know. And then um, same night, I called him out. I knew it because uh, he was supposed to be a replacement. And then I was like, that's the best. Plus, he, you know, he looked at me, so let's fucking do it. I was speaking with their coach Henry Hooft right before you came out of the medicals, and he was saying that being in Florida is really benefiting you, and he's just seeing you evolve as a fighter. What really are the the most important things that you're gaining from working out down there? I've been w working with a lot of high-level guy, and over there it's just like, it's, it's a brawl. Every training you have to go, you have to, it's hard, it's like a fight too, you know, it's, a, it's mentally tough, and that's what maybe give me the drive also, like every time I, co I come at training, I'm motivated, you know, I'm here, I'm, I'm happy, and I know it's hard, but I'm still happy, so this is what make me stronger for sure. I felt confident again, and I, I also switched my nickname to No Time, because, uh, we talked about this for a while, you know, back in the day, I, I had three wins in one night. All those wins came off in the one minute mark. And uh, we all joked with my friend, uh, we called, they called me no time. But I didn't, didn't really, you know, officialize the nickname, but now it was time to, to do it. And, uh, and then I fought Jimmy and I, I wanted to knock him out in one round. I, wanna be, I wanted to be the only one who knocked him out in one round because he never lost in the first round. And uh, I officialized the nickname the same night. 
they call, Bruce Buffer called my name in no time, Özdemir, and then uh, then I knew it. It was about to be showtime, you know, and uh, so I knocked him out in 42 seconds. He is confident. He's got hard for days. Nice short shot there from Özdemir. Oh, 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 huge him. punches. Özdemir heard him. Awesome. There is no no best way to you know to to showcase and to uh, officialize the nickname than that, that what I did that night. So so that was the uh, huge night for me and uh, you know that I tried to accomplish a lot. I always try to be ahead. You know after that fight, two days after, I, I called out Gustafsson. You know he was next. He's the best friend of training partners and best friend of Jimmy. You know they train together. He's the number one contender. That's that's uh, that's uh, the the best way to do it because I wanted first to fight John Jones, so the winner of the of the main event that night. But John Jones was already talking to about uh, fighting uh, Brock Lesnar, and that he wanted to do some money fight like Conor. And I knew, you know, my I'm new in the game. I got like 20,000 followers, like nothing. I don't have a, a big brand. I, I don't have a Good, you know, pay-per-view pay -per -view wise, it doesn't make sense for him. I'm not gonna bring him money, so I knew I will never get that fight. So I don't need to. I'm not gonna lose my time, your energy, like promoting that fight if I knew it was never gonna happen. So I switch to Gus, but Gus never answered me. Okay, go. Where does that belief come from? Uh, believing in myself. Uh, I guess it's mostly natural, but um, I wasn't like that all the time. I remember I was a really shy guy and um, a really alone all the time because I had problems back in the day and uh, I had my ups and downs, a lot of downs for a while, but I remember my father was, so my mom and dad were separated, but my father was a really tough guy, you know, like really strict and, uh, and uh, but he's a, he's a really good guy, but I remember one day, <laughs> uh, I was always walking in the street and looking down, you know, being all, all shy and, and stuff, and um, you know, people came in front of me and didn't know if I have to go left or right. You know, I was panicking, you know, and shit like that. And um, I looked down all the time and one day I walk in the shit, a dog shit. And my dad got so mad. He told me like, how can you look down the road, look at the street and not even be able to see a dog shit and be able to walk on it, you know? It's like you're even you're looking down and you're you're able to walk on that. It's like how is it possible? And then uh, I don't I don't know, but that day it made me realize like I'm I'm not there, you know, like I'm I'm not present in what I what I do in life. I'm not present. I need when when I do something, I need to be fully there. I need to be I need to have a goal in mind. I grant you that if you begin to work to develop your gifts. You'll develop a strong sense of happiness. You'll get a larger vision of yourself because part of beginning to get a larger vision of yourself, all of us need some area of our lives where we can have a feeling of competence. That people know when they think about this area, that's something you do. That you eat and sleep that. And that you do that. You do that. And people know it. And you know it, and you know that you know that you know this. If you don't know anything else, you know this. When other folk are having a good time, you've got to have the, the strength of character to concentrate, 
to read, to digest information. That area that you love, that you are going to master that particular area. In this era of accelerated change, overwhelming complexity and tremendous competition, as you begin to develop and expand your skills and your talents and your vision of yourself, you will always be in control of your destiny. I was in the UFC, in the UFC beginning this year in February and now um, people talk to me about fighting for the belt right away. And uh, that's the magic of it because I didn't lose time. Uh, I went for it. I fought the toughest guy. I fought the... I fought the, the biggest name and I, I wasn't scared to fight him because I knew I, I know my potential and I, I know I'm going to win. So that wasn't, a, that wasn't an issue for me at all. So I just had to be there and not, not lose time, just fight my fight, knock people out and then I, uh, get the reward.